the onset of Iraqi war. The Iraq War, which is also known as the Third Gulf War, started on 20th of March 2003. It all began with the invasion of Iraq, which is known as the Iraqi Freedom Operation. It was led by the alien spy United States against the Saddam Hussein's Ba'ath Party. The then President of the United States, George W. Bush, had declared the completion of the United States on 20th March 2003. This was issued under the banner named Mission Accomplished. The invasion of Iraq by the United States led to the ultimate defeat of the Iraqi army, which was followed by the capturing and the execution of their leader, Saddam Hussein. Iraq was occupied by the United States and made its attempt to establish the new government in Iraq. However, there was great violence against the alliance's forces of the United States by the Iraqi citizens, which made another series of asymmetrical wars between the insurgents, the new Iraqi government and the United States military. It was in November 2011 that the Iraqi body count, which had based its analysis on the data published by the media, estimated that around 103,013 to 112,571 citizens of Iraq have died during the violence during the Iraqi war. It also estimated that around 250,000 Iraqi citizens and civilians were injured and wounded. On the sides of the US Army, around 4,483 deaths were reported and around 32,219 soldiers were wounded during the Iraq War. The Iraq War also resulted in the emigration of as many as 2 million Iraqis as they fled abroad since the year 2003 from the war raging native country of theirs. Most of the Iraqi citizens fled to the surrounding countries like Jordan and Syria, and some even managed to flee to the European countries and the United States. The organization named National Priorities Project estimated that the Iraqi war had cost as much as 800 billion US dollars. The Iraqi war is said to be the second deadliest war in Afghanistan and is characterized by the doctrine of George W. Bush named as Preventive War, which is now also known as New American Empire. The Iraq war has also been involved in the GWOT, Global War on Terrorism, which is declared by George W. Bush was in response to the terrorist attacks of 11th September 2001 on the Twin Towers, USA. The main reasons behind the Iraq war The second war of Iraq, known as the Iraq war or the third Gulf war, was conducted under the leadership of the United States. After the United States managed to launch an offensive in Iraq, Afghanistan, which was supposed to be the refugee spot for Osama bin Laden and where there were probable links between the Al-Qaeda and Iraq, the President of the United States, George W. Bush, charged Tommy Franks and Rumsfeld to establish and lay down the plan of the attacks against Iraq to overpower the country and bring down the roots and causes of terrorism in the world. The plan was named as the Operation 1003V, which was supposed to be a revolution of the war plan which came to be the first Gulf War. The first and the foremost reason for the declaration of the Iraq War by the United States was the fight against terrorism. Iraq had presented itself as a supporting nation to the Al-Qaeda and the notions of Osama bin Laden, the organization which was responsible for the terrorist attack on the United States. These were responsible for the attacks against several U.S. embassies in Africa, the attack on the warship of the United States named as USS Co., and the terrorist attacks of 11th September 2001 on the Twin Towers in the United States. These charges by the United States against the Al-Qaeda and Osama bin Laden have been shown to be unfounded yet, including the United States Senate. This was based on the consideration that the Islamic extremism of Saddam Hussein was a threat to his regime. The second reason that could be quoted for the Iraq war between the Iraqi extremists and the United States could be the elimination or eradication of the weapons of mass destruction that were held by Iraq, though quite supposedly. Iraq was in possession of several weapons like the long-range missiles. The proliferation of these weapons of mass destruction was demonstrated by Iraq since the 1990s. 
However, the United States charged the Iraq survey group to search for these deadly weapons in September 2004. The Iraq survey group, on the other hand, declared that it was not in possession of any of the chemical weapons of mass destruction since the year 1991 or any current program which was in progress. The third reason for the declaration of the Third Gulf War by the United States on Iraq was supposed to be the arrest of the Iraqi leader Saddam Hussein. The abolishment of his rule in Iraq was the primary reason for the military upheavals in Iraq, which was on the other hand supposed to restore peace and democracy to the region. All these reasons, or the causes of the Iraq war, have been contested by several journalists, analysts and politicians. The evidence which was abducted, the United States was in order to support their claims about the presence of the weapons of mass destruction in Iraq. It also shared its claims against Iraq about the production of these kinds of weapons of mass destruction or the existence of the links between Iraq and the possible causes of terrorism, including the Al-Qaeda. These claims caused great controversies on the global grounds, especially after the publication of the Memorandum of the Downing Street in the United States. In addition to these, some more elements have raised the controversial questions about the real motives of the war or the intervention. These elements included the links between the neoconservatives, which were in power in the oil companies, and Washington. These included the Enron, Carlyle Group, Unocal, Halliburton Energy Services, and much more. There were also links between the neoconservatives, which were in power in the subcontractors of the army and Washington, and also the decision of the Iraq to not argue against the old currency in euros and not in dollars. Therefore, there are two basic goals to be distinguished which included the objectives and the official statements in the speeches of the representatives of the White House and that of the reporters in the press as well as the opinion of the doctrine which have been expressed in the formal objectives or the statements. Official Objectives and Statements the various kinds of formal or official statements or the objects as defined and expressed in the speeches of the representatives of the White House and that of the reports during the press can be summarized as Political Objectives These objectives included the establishment of the transition government as soon as possible, which would identify the people in the democratic government as the representatives of the Iraqi communities in totally. These included the Sunnins, Shiites and Kurds. After the formation and establishment of the transition government, the next set of the political objectives included the capturing of the members of the Ba'ath Party and then going on to judge the dictatorial regime of theirs set up by Saddam Hussein and his family. Humanitarian Objectives These objectives were meant to liberate and free Iraq from the dictatorship of Saddam Hussein and its family. By doing this, Iraq will be rendered as a united, free and stable country. After this, the objective was aimed at supporting the humanitarian aid and the reconstruction of the same and then the reduction of the damage caused to the organization of the country during the dictatorship of Saddam Hussein. These objectives also aimed at the restoration of the infrastructure of Iraq by the prosecution of Saddam Hussein for the crimes committed by him in the form of the violation of the human rights. The humanitarian objectives also aimed at giving punishments to Iraq of the 16 UN resolutions and also for the Oil Against Food 2 program that was not complied with by the Iraq government. At last, the humanitarian objectives also aimed at the promotion of the democracy and the upliftment of the human rights of women in the male-dominated Muslim world in Iraq. Military Objectives these objectives were aimed at removing the threat to the world, which was because of the ability of Saddam Hussein to wage war in Iraq. Moreover, the military objectives were also aimed at the neutralization of the weapons, which were the causes of mass destruction. These included the chemical, biological, nuclear, the long-range missiles and the other kinds of deadly weapons which led to the mass destruction. The military objectives were aimed at the selection of the military targets and the recovery of the properties of Kuwait, including the military equipment and the prisoners of war. These were seized by Saddam Hussein during the first war in the Gulf area. Anti-terrorist objectives 
It involves the destruction of the evidence and sources of terrorism, which are located in Iraq, and the elimination of the Al-Qaeda, which would help in the prevention of terrorism. These objectives would also help in providing refugee for several Palestinian terrorist groups and the creation of several military bases to the terrorist groups in Iran. To provide the justification of the doubt of existence about the possible connections between Al-Qaeda and Iraq, the secret intelligence of the United States have evoked several meetings between the Iraqi intelligence and Osama bin Laden. Between the years 1994 and 1995, an Iraqi intelligence officer went on to meet Osama bin Laden in Khartoum. However, there was no exact proof of the fact that this meeting ever took place. In March 1998, Iraq invited the Taliban on its territory when Osama bin Laden expressed his views that he wished fatwa against the United States. In July 1998, the Iraqi officials had to travel to meet the Taliban and bin Laden in Afghanistan. As per the reports of the intelligence services, various other meetings took place, which also included the one in which Saddam Hussein approached Osama bin Laden to settle Iraq and its issues. In the final results presented by the intelligence services, there was evidence of the good and reliable agreement between Iraq and Al-Qaeda. However, there were no sound evidence of the collaboration of the Iraq and Al-Qaeda on the addressing of the US interests. As per one particular report from the Czech intelligence, which was passed to the CIA, Mohammed Atta, an Egyptian pilot of the aircraft that crashed into the Twin Towers, met an Iraqi intelligence services officer on 9th of April 2001. His name was Samir Alani, who was a diplomat at the Iraqi embassy in Prague. Economic Objectives One of the major economic objectives of the formal statements is the protection of the oil wealth which would serve useful for reconstruction of the country Iraq and would also put an end to the huge black market of the oil production and promotion. In the end, the aim of getting dominance and occupying Iraq was to ensure that there was a continued flow of oil from the regions of the Persian Gulf to the rest of the world, especially in the Gulf countries like the Kuwait, Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates, as these countries were ample resources of oil for the United States. Informal Objectives and Statements The various lists of the informal statements and the objectives include the following. Political objectives. One of the major political objectives under the informal list of the statements includes the installation of the new democratic government in Iraq that would serve the United States. It would also serve the US interests and would help in the elimination of the overall Islamic rule and regimes which were present in the neighboring Iraq. After the constant threats from the terrorists that expressed the attacks on the World Trade Center and also about the outbreak of the war against the spreading terrorism in the world, especially in Iraq and Afghanistan, the political objectives aimed at allowing the administration of the President George W. Bush to become alerted and rage a war against terrorism in front of the eyes of the millions of the Americans. It also aimed at the creation of an image of patriotism and the defender of the nation in the United States. Another factor which was to be considered under the set of the political objectives was the suppression of the anti-Israel communities. As the regime and domination of Saddam Hussein were considered to be anti-Israel, which supported all the possible attempts at the destruction of Israel, in addition to the provision of support of the Palestinians against the struggle with Israel. It also aimed at the boycotting of the State of Israel and the stopping of the persistence of the Iraq War, which was a must for the stabilization of the political environment in Iraq as well as in the neighboring countries. Military Objectives These objectives aimed at the placement of the US troops and its bases on a permanent basis on the territories of the Iraq, such that the United States could have the control of the Persian Gulf area. This would show the world that the military organization of the United States was still the most powerful in the world and was capable of releasing the captured US prisoners in Iraq during the war with much ease and in an effective manner. Economic Objectives The conflict of the economic objectives allowed many American companies to come close to the administration of George Bush, such as to get the profits from the oil in Iraq. 
This would be enabled by taking the control of the oil wells in Iraq in the fourth holder of the reserves. The objectives also aimed at being motivated by the analysis of the geopolitics of the oil industry and market in Iraq on the acquirement of the same and earning huge profits out of it. In addition to these, the defence sector would also get the opportunity to sell and buy the stocks and allow the stimulation of the productive activities as the needs of the people increased. By doing this, a lot of money could be fetched back into the economy of the United States, especially in the fields of oil and weapon, which were considered to be very close to the Republicans of the United States. The UN Diplomatic Dispute of the Iraq War the Iraq War, or the Third Gulf War, was followed by the UN mission in Iraq, who was in charge of the disarmament of the Iraqi government through the resolution of 1441 to 2002, which was passed at the request of the British and the Americans on 8th of November 2002. The Security Council of the UN was not able to agree between the supporters, as a result of which the two axes were discussed. One was about peace and the other axis was about war. The axes are as follows. Axis of peace. This axis included Germany, France, Russia and China. For these countries, more time was to be allotted by the inspectors. Axis of war. This axis included the countries like the United States and the United Kingdom from whom Iraq was still in possession of the deadly weapons responsible for the mass destruction and was regarded as the country of a threat to the rest of the world. In addition to this, the alliance countries felt that after numerous resolutions and 12 years of inspections, the UN had still not succeeded in the determination of the true potential for the threat of the possible possession of the weapons of mass destruction. Therefore, the expulsion of the UN inspectors took place in November 1997. Moreover, the non-cooperation of Iraq in 1998 proved the near conservatives of America that it was incapable of the enforcement of the international organization. There were several US arguments which can be explained as The failure of the disarmament process This happened after 1991 after the Second Gulf War. The United Nations UN, adopted the Resolution 687, under which, in the Article 8, it was decided that Iraq shall accept the destruction on an unconditional basis. It also specified that Iraq would unconditionally accept the removal or the rendering of the harmless under the supervision of the international organizations. First. All biological, chemical and the stocks of agents including the subsystems and components of the facilities for the development and research. It shall also support the removal of the manufacturing facilities related to the weapons of the mass destruction which needed to be stopped on an immediate basis. Second, all the ballistic missiles, which had a range of greater than 150 kilometers, and the repairing and the production of these weapons must also be stopped immediately. Following these sets of guidelines, the UN inspectors and the IAEA, International Agency for Atomic Energy, conducted several inspections on various sites of Iraq, which continued until December 1998. In November 2001, Washington issued a warning against Baghdad, which was against the production and promotion of the deadly weapons of mass destruction WMD. The warning stated that the President of the United States, George W. Bush, demanded the renewal of the inspections of the United Nations to disarm and weaken the powers of Iraq. As time went by, the United States put more and more pressure on Iraq by convincing Saddam Hussein that Iraq should let the inspectors return to the United Nations. On 8th of November 2002, as many as 15 members of the Security Councils of the United Nations put their votes for the Resolution 1441, under which it was stated that if in any case Saddam Hussein failed to meet the obligations of the United States on disarmament of Iraq, this might result in some serious consequences which Iraq might have to bear. On 27th of November 2002, Iraq agreed on the enforcement of the new resolution put forward by the United Nations. As a result, the CIA hoped an increase in the chances of fighting the WMD before the implementation of the UN resolution. 
CIA in search of the VMDs. On October 2002, CIA issued a report which was entitled as Iraq's Weapons of Mass Destruction Programs. This report was very clear on the subject and since the time of the end of the UN inspection in 1998 and after the violations of the United Nations resolutions, Iraq maintained the project of chemical weapons. Iraq also continued with the production and the development of the missiles and had invested greatly in the biological weapons as well. Most of the specialists considered that Iraq had restated or reformed its resolutions or programs of the nuclear weapons as well. The Iraq men who had tried to obtain the uranium tubes in the 1990s from the Niger had once again resumed the production and the promotion of the chemical agents as well as the conservation and the development of the deadly missiles. However, this was not the opinion of all the specialists. Joseph Wilson, who was a former diplomat working on the Iraq war issue and causes, had been given the role of the investigation into the Niger uranium. This responsibility was given to him by the CIA on February 2002. It involved the investigation that Saddam Hussein could have used the Niger uranium in the nuclear program of the Iraq. The report presented by Joseph Wilson was quite clear and he found nothing doubtful. However, on 24th of December 2002, the uranium of the Niger was mentioned in a report submitted by the British which indicated that Iraq was attempting to provide and promote uranium in the African countries. In addition to this, on January 2003, the US President George W. Bush used this British report to prove to the United Nations that Iraq had recovered and restarted its nuclear program. Although no weapons of mass destruction were found by the CIA, the United Nations became confirmed that Iraq had restarted the nuclear program to other countries as well. The CIA of the United Nations compared the documents that were provided by Iraq to the UN with what they had recognized and deduced after the Gulf War in 1991. Justification to the UN On 5th of February 2003, Colin Powell made his appearance before the Security Council of the UN and made revelations about the evidence of the illegal activities that were taking place in the Ba'athist rule or regime. On the support of his evidence, Colin Powell went on to show several pictures of the vehicles that were used as the mobile laboratories for biological research and also the satellite photos of the several military plants. In addition to these, he also presented the satellite photos of the weapon bunkers and the recording of a conversation between the officers of the Iraqi Republican Guards who were speaking about the VMD. On the basis of that, the countries like France, Russia and China, who were threatened to use their veto for the prevention of the military action of the UN against Iraq, also refused to follow the UK and the United States. As a result of this, the United States made a decision to attack Iraq and rage a war on it without even the approval of the Security Council of the United Nations. Controversy over VMD Richard Butler, an Australian diplomat and the head of the UNSCOM, United Nations Special Commission, and also the charge of research on the subject of the VMD after the Gulf War, held the communication with the Pentagon with respect to the military situation in Iraq. He had the detailed and comprehensive plans within the industrial facilities which were inspected in Iraq by the inspectors of the VMD of UNSCOM. This allowed the programming and the coding of the bombs which were guided by GPS for the destruction of the industrial facilities during the time of 1998 and 2003. The inspections report and the information were found by the inspectors in 1998 about the fact that Iraq was producing the VX gas. Iraq had however denied and then admitted to producing as much as 3,900 litres and 200 litres but did not use them as deadly weapons. In 2002, the inspectors of the UN summarised their findings in Iraq. This was presented in the form of a written report by the analyst Kenneth Katzman. Between the years 1991 and 1994, the UN inspectors discovered as many as 40 secret nuclear research laboratories and three clandestine programs for the enrichment of uranium. 
On 27th of January 2003, Hans Blix said in a report that the UN inspectors had discovered that Saddam Hussein and his Iraq was in the production of the VX gas in 2002 and was also involved in the production of the gases like mustard, theodiglicol and tactical ballistic missiles. One of the categories of the missiles that were produced in Iraq were known as al Samuda. These missiles were developed, designed and manufactured in Iraq. The inspectors of the UNSCOM believed in 1998 that these deadly missiles had the capability of 149 kilometers and in accordance with the UN Resolution 687 which had established 150 kilometers as the maximum range of the missiles. But during the later years of 1998, Iraq seemed to ease off its limits by extending the range of the missiles to as much as 160 kilometers or 190 kilometers, depending on the different versions. On 21st of July 2003, a dozen of these deadly missiles were destroyed just a few weeks before the invasion by the forces of the United States. Another version of the deadly missiles, which was named as a Babel 100 or Al Fatah was launched by Iraq with a maximum range of 161 kilometers and was built around 2001 and 2003. These missiles were used for the invasion of Kuwait and against the headquarters of the 2nd Brigade of the 3rd Infantry Division of the US on 7th of April 2003. This deadly invasion killed three soldiers and wounded 14 soldiers, also destroying as many as 22 army vehicles. Opposition to the war The world witnessed several events against the Iraq war. In several countries, large demonstrations against the war were attended by people who wanted to show their rejection to the intervention of the US and Britain in Iraq. These kinds of movements and demonstrations were quite strong in Europe. In Europe, according to the polls, around 70% to 90% of the European population was opposed to the Iraq war. In London, various events have demonstrated the split between the decisions of both the governments who were in support of the war and also against the citizens who were in favour of the war. The administration of George W. Bush was quite sensitive to getting criticism from the citizens of the United States. They went on to ask the CIA investigations into this matter and also proceed with illegal phone tapping to reveal the critics of the war on a public note. Opposition of the Vatican if the government of the United States and the Bush administration was only interested in oil from Iraq, the Vatican was concerned with the fate of people and respect for dignity as persons or individuals created in the image of God. When the United States troops began massing out along the outskirts in Iraq during early 2003, the Pope, along with other dignitaries of the Vatican, started multiplying diplomatic efforts to avoid or prevent war and hoped for a peaceful conclusion to the crisis until the last moment. Pope John Paul II went out to call all the Christians to pray the Rosary for peace. He even sent out his two cardinals to go and meet Saddam Hussein and President Bush on a personal level to resolve peaceful conditions. The Pope was aware of the fact that the citizens of Iraq have suffered greatly from the point of losing their lives to their homes and livelihood. This embargo of 12 years had resulted in the death of thousands of people, several innocent children, lack of the essentials like medicine, food, water and much more. The new war and rage in Iraq could result in the death of thousands more innocent lives. The war had a real ugly face. There was a lack of food, water, electricity, medicine, essential goods and no public services. As a result, this humanitarian disaster could affect the lives of thousands in a drastic manner. The thing that the Pope and the Vatican feared the most was the creation of the military intervention in the Arab world which would lead to more terrorist attacks in the United States and other Western countries. In addition to this, the attack on the United States could create great resentment against the Western countries such that this rage could turn into a war of Muslims against Christians. For instance, it is due to the permanent presence of the US troops in Saudi Arabia since the time of Gulf War in 1991, which led to the creation of the great terrorist group Al-Qaeda under Osama bin Laden. 
as under the current situation, it seemed that the U.S. troops will continue to remain in Iraq for a longer period of time. The results could be worse. On 29th of March 2003, Pope John Paul II said that the Catholic bishops of Indonesia, one of the countries with largest Muslim population, feared that the conflict in Iraq could lead to confrontation between the Christians and the Muslims. On 20th March, when Pope John Paul II came to know of the military intervention by the United States in Iraq, he had retired himself in private to pray for peace. On 6th of April 2003, during the Angelus, Pope said that his thoughts were with Iraq and all the people who were severely affected due to the raging war. Cause of the War on 20th of March 2003, the US President George W. Bush officially declared war on Iraq. After giving an ultimatum call to Saddam Hussein and his sons to leave Iraq, the United States, on 19th of March, had launched missiles at Baghdad. In response, Iraq sent Kuwait from a Soviet-made speedboat, which was hidden in the coastline, along with several HY-2 anti-ship missiles. They even launched flying tidal waves, which reached the uninhabited areas, and one even fell to 7 hours 18 UTC, near the headquarters of the 1st Marine Expeditionary Force of the United States. As many as 20 airborne missiles were thrown in the direction of the Allied forces in Iraq from Kuwait, among which the majority was interrupted by the MIM-104 Patriot missiles. However, on 3rd of April, one of them hit the command center of the U.S. troops unit. The strategy of the Allies was to bombard the capital city of Iraq along with other cities of the country. They also aimed at creating terror in the Iraq citizens and to observe mass desertions in the army of Iraq or the uprising of the people of Iraq. This was all aimed at the destruction of the country's main defense system. As a result, several buildings were bombed, including the presidential palace and the structure of the Ba'ath Party. Other buildings which were bombarded included the quarters of the Iraqi armed forces. The forces of the Allies went now to the ground offensive from 18 hours 30 UTC after the series of aerial bombardments. In parallel to the aerial bombardments, the three divisions of the United States Army, including the American of the Marine Corps, 1st Expeditionary Force and the 1st British Armoured Division of the British Army, along with as many as 100,000 troops and several tanks, which were under the control of the command of the United States Central Command, which was stationed in Kuwait, entered the country through the southern border. Then they clashed and fought with the three out of the 17 divisions of the regular army in Iraq, each of which was a military force equivalent to the US troops. Various other military forces, including that of Veda and Saddam, were responsible for the custody of the static sensitive areas and had no or little opportunity to fight. Various battles were fought for several days in the cities of Iraq, including Nasiriya and Umm Qasr, for as many two weeks in Basra. The Iraqi resistance fought in the urban or the semi urban areas exclusively. The Iraqi commandos, who were also known as Iraqi Special Forces, had held a neighborhood of Umm Qasar for almost a week. The forces of the Iraqi army in Basra consisted of the 6th Armored Division in Iraq. The forces of Iraq in Basra were only supported by the artillery of the total volume of a battalion with no air support. The 1st British Armored Division clashed on the right by the 3 Commando Brigade Royal Marines. The Allies had the air support on the borders throughout the movement of the United States Army to Baghdad. This prevented the British Armored Division from participating in the attack on Baghdad along with the US forces. As a result, the Iraqi forces which were present in Basra melted away. In a similar manner, the regular army of Iraq in Nasiriya, which consisted of the Iraqi 11th Infantry Division and was supported by a small number of mortars, opposed successfully with no armors for as many as three days. The mechanized infantry of the US Army had heavy armored tanks and combat abrams which in combination with powerful artillery and with overall air supremacy bypassed the major cities of Iraq in their march to Baghdad. The main aim of the US Army was to reach on the focus of plan as quickly as possible such that a fall in the capital city would result in the surrendering of the centers of resistance in Iraq. 
At the same time, in the Kurdistan region of Iraq, the U.S. allies had already planned a mechanized infantry division of the U.S. Army, which was coming from the province of Mardin in Turkey. After some days of fighting, the U.S. Army managed to push to the southern and eastern region of Baghdad. As a result, the regime of Saddam Hussein fell, who was arrested in a basement in Tikrit on 14th of December 2003 by the U.S. Army and was then condemned by the Iraqi Special Tribunal and hanged the next day on 30th of December 2006. At large, the main consequences of the war and the invasion of Iraq resulted in the disappearance of Saddam Hussein, the creation of an Iraqi transitional government, the increase in the general insecurity in Iraq, which included the terrorist attacks, murders, assaults, thefts and much more. The war also resulted in the humanitarian crisis in Iraq, an increase in the terrorist attacks in other parts of the world, as well as the organization of free elections in Iraq after the casualties of several army men and common people both from the sides of Iraq and United States. The final question that still remains is could all those dead and wounded and the overall economic costs to the United States due entirely to the lies of the US President Vice President, Secretary of Defense, the US media, in favor of the hidden agenda of getting power over the oil in Iraq and the expansion of the Israeli terrorists in the Arab region.